Let's try and calculate an internal energy using a partition function for argon. So uh, we can go ahead and we can write down the molecular partition function as a product of the translational, the rotational, the vibrational, and the electronic. And uh, the electronic we've seen before, we can pretty much just set this to one. Uh, we don't have any unpaired electrons, so it's probably going to have a singly degenerate grain state. Uh, in terms of vibrations, there are no vibrations and uh, there are no rotations. So if you like, if you evaluate these, these all come out to one. So the only thing we really have to concentrate on is the translational partition function. So we can go ahead and we can calculate the translational partition function. So uh, we've, give, we've uh, seen the expression before, QT is equal to 2 pi mass of the atom, Boltzmann constant temperature, all that to the 3 half power, times by the volume, and all that divided by Planck's constant cubed. So we've seen the expression for energy, which we can get from the partition function, is n, the number of particles, k, t squared, over q times by the derivative of q with respect to t. So we really need to be able to calculate the derivative of q, which is just the translational partition function. So we can take the derivative of this function here. So if we take the derivative of this, so d dt of q, uh, it's going to equal to, well, the things that aren't changing are 2 and pi and m and k. So those are just constants and h cubed and v. So the only thing that's changing then is this t to the 3 half term here. And if we take the derivative of t to the 3 half, we bring the power down. So it's 3 halves t, we reduce the power by 1, so to the 1 half. And we can see that this is actually equal to the partition function uh, times by 3 halves divided by the temperature. So uh, the 3 halves come in from here. And of course, our temperature was t to the 3 halves. Now it's t to the 1 half. So we've divided it out by q. And that's helpful um, because when we substitute back into this expression here, uh, nkt squared over q. And uh, if we write the derivative in terms of q itself, then it's 3 halves q over t. So we've got some cancellation here. So the partition function, although we could evaluate it, it ends up canceling out. Uh, the t squared and one of those t's cancels out leaving just one of them so uh, that is three halves n k t and uh, the number of particles right so if we pick uh, Avogadro's number so if we make this n a and uh, multiply Avogadro's number by the Boltzmann constant that's just the gas constant so it gives us our energy then is three halves r t on a molar basis and uh, normally we're interested on a molar basis. So let's uh, shovel this up for a little bit. So we wanted the internal energy, right? So uh, the internal energy at a temperature T is equal to the internal energy at absolute zero. I guess these are molar, so I should put little subscript m's down here, and uh, plus the 3 halves RT. So remember, this front term here, can over the zero point energy. There's actually no zero point energy for translation. But if you like, you can think of it as the, as the energy of the nucleons themselves and the electrons in the atom. All these things aren't really changing, though, so it's not really a big deal. And notice this uh, is exactly the same result from the equipartition theorem. So if you remember the equipartition theorem uh, back earlier right we said for each quadratic mode uh, there is a one half RT contribution to the energy so since we've got three different directions that the particle can move along the kinetic energy is you know one half M times the velocity in the X direction squared plus the same thing in the Y squared plus the same thing in the Z squared so that's three lots of one half RTs so that gives us exactly the same expression which is encouraging we can take a more complicated molecule such as HCl and uh, we can use the partition function to calculate the internal energy. And again, we can write the molecule's partition function is a product of the translational, the rotational, the vibrational, and the electronic. And just like before, right, we can go ahead and we can assume that the electronic partition function is one. There aren't any uh, low-lying electronic states for HCl. All the electrons are paired. And uh, so it's probably going to be a singlet grain state anyway. In terms of the vibrations, right, we can go ahead and we can make the assumption, the approximation, that this is 1. And we can calculate Q if we want to. And we can actually account for the fact that at very high temperatures, some of those higher vibrational states do get excited.
excited, but just for elementary work, we can assume we're in the low temperature limit where those upper vibrational levels are not important. So uh, we've got the translations, which we've seen before, and uh, but this time here we've got a rotation, and uh, we've got one rotation to deal with here. So uh, we've got a diatomic molecule, and uh, with the center of mass is uh, probably pretty darn close to the chlorine, and so we've got rotation about this axis here. So uh, now we can write the partition function. So uh, the partition function then is equal to the translational function, which is 2 pi, the mass of the molecule, the Boltzmann constant, um, to the 3 halves times by the volume, uh, times by the temperature to the 3 halves. So notice I, I took it out from inside the parentheses here, just because when I differentiate, it's a lot easier to just kind of move it to the outside. And that was divided, I think, by Planck's constant cubed. And so uh, that is the translational partition function. And then I need to multiply by the rotational function, and we said that that is equal to kt over sigma times by b. And sigma for HCl is just 1, so uh, there's a no problem at all when it rotates 180 degrees, it looks completely different, so uh, we don't have to worry about over counting the rotational states. And uh, technically I suppose we have to be careful with the temperature, as long as our temperature is, uh, is high enough, then this approximation here should be fine. And for HCl it's kind of a heavy molecule, so we should be okay at uh, any reasonable temperatures I would say, unless we're close to absolute zero. So we need to know, uh, we need to find the derivative dq dt in order to calculate the energy, and uh, we can take the derivative of this function here, and uh, oh gosh, essentially we don't have too much that can vary here, do we? So uh, everything here inside my green is going to be held constant, and it's only really the terms that I'm going to circle in red do I have to worry about. And so uh, I can look at that and I can see that essentially the green turns, you know, whatever they are, they're unchanging. But I've got, what, t to the 3 halves and t to the 1 power, so that's a t to the 5 halves term. And if I differentiate that, then it'll be 5 halves times by t to the 3 halves. And again, just like before, right, if I look in terms of the partition function, that is equal to 5 halves times by the original partition function divided by the temperature. So uh, notice if I divide the uh, temperature out, right, I take this 5 halves and reduce it to 3 halves. And that's helpful now because when I substitute in the expression, uh, I can now uh, go ahead and cancel out the partition functions without having to evaluate all these nasty terms here. So let's go ahead and push things up. So let's go ahead and pop this up the screen a little bit. So if we want the energy then, then uh, we know the energy is nkt squared over q times by the derivative of the partition function. So uh, what do we have? We got nkt squared over q, and we figured out that the derivative is 5 halves q over t. So just like before, we have cancellation of the partition function. No need to evaluate it. We have one of the t's canceling out, and uh, that gives us nkt all times by 5 halves. Okay, that's kind of ugly. Now, if we use uh, Avogadro's number's worth of particles, then we know that Avogadro's number times the Boltzmann constant is the gas constant. So on a molar basis, then, we have uh, this equal to 5 halves times by RT. And so if we want to write the expression for the uh, internal energy, the molar internal energy at temperature T is equal to the molar internal energy at absolute zero plus 5 halves RT. So uh, this term here is essentially correcting for any zero point energy we've left off plus uh, any energy of the electrons and nucleons themselves. So we're seeing that the uh, partition function is really, really cool, right? So we've shown that the energy is equal to nkt squared over q, uh, the partition function times by the der temperature derivative of q, and uh, we showed that the internal energy is equal to the internal energy at absolute zero plus uh, zero point energy plus nuclei energy whatnot. Uh, plus E, so very cool. And we can also get heat capacities as well. So remember earlier we defined the uh, constant volume heat capacity as the derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature while holding temperature constant. And we figured out a way to calculate that, right? So the internal energy is the internal em energy at absolute zero plus this energy term here. Uh, over dt, a constant v, and of course since this is a constant, right, then the derivative basically just falls right out. So we can calculate 
constant volume heat capacities from the partition function using this equation up above. And if we want uh, Cp, let's say we know that for an ideal gas, Cp uh, minus Cv is equal to R. So uh, if we can calculate Cv for, say, a gas, then we can use our expression here to calculate Cp. And so that's another heat capacity. And if we've got a material other than a gas, such as a solid or a liquid, there are other thermodynamic expressions that allow us to basically turn uh, Cv into Cp. P. So we can go to our, back to our expressions we derived earlier. So for argon uh, gas, we showed that the internal energy is uh, the zero point correction factor plus three halves RT. So we can calculate the CV. So CV is just that partial derivative with respect to temperature holding volume constant. So we can see that this term here, the derivative is zero. And we know the derivative of T is just one. So we can show then that CV is equal to three halves R. Actually, I guess this was a molar one here. So technically these are molar CVs we're calculating here. And if we look for HCl, we can see that the molar internal energy was the zero point correction terms plus five halves RT. And the same kind of thing applies here. We can show CV is just the derivative of five halves RT with respect to T. So that's five halves R. So our partition function allows us to calculate internal energy and it also allows us to calculate the heat capacities.